OpenJS Security Cloud Space meeting is uh, the end of July, July 29th, and we're talking about templates for our uh, security, security compliance guidelines. So what we're, I was saying, Jordan, is like I sent the link for this one because this has links to the different um, pages uh, to go off of. So, but we can walk through this really quick. Um, I did use this template myself. Um, I filled in, so what I've done, I didn't do everything yet because I wanted to just get your all thoughts before I completely finished. But basically what I did is I finished the categories. So this is what the category page looks like now in its completion. Um, this is what the priority group page looks like in its completion. Um, and these are what the priority group pages look like. I did the first, like, I think seven or eight of them. Um, and I took, uh, Ben's advice and hopefully, uh, could enlist you all to do the rest of them, not just to do the work itself, but just to get some, just to get your vibes on actually maintaining it since, um, that would be nice to know, like how much you hate maintaining these things in their current form. Um, what is the priority did. group? The priority groups were this idea um, where, uh, because the list was so long of like 72 items, we wanted to give folks some sense of like, if there's things you do first, here's the things you do. And rather than having like a very prescriptive sequential number of one through 72, I grouped them together a little bit. These have been in there for a while. So um, if you have feelings on the groupings themselves, that's totally fine. We can change them. Um, like why is training more important than MFA? Um, I put that at zero. And the reason I put that at zero is that it's not a thing that, I guess the reason I put it at zero is that it's something that people do over time continuously or as something that doesn't have a lot of blockers beside a person's individual time, rather than like, this is the thing that the project has to do as a group, we're gonna go make changes to something. Um, so okay. I, didn't, I didn't think that it made sense to say like, okay, go change these settings before you go take this hour long CBT from Linux Foundation on um, the last top 10 or something like that. So I, mean, that I feel like most people that. looking at this are going to be, how can I check off the most boxes with the least amount of effort? Mm -hmm. And so that's the priority I would group them in as like, what, what has the most, what takes the least amount of work and has the most positive impact and training is amazing over time, but like that takes the most amount of work. So like, I would expect to look at that last in the list almost like, or like near the bottom, whereas like MFA is very quick to turn on and has a very high impact and you could do it immediately. Uh, yeah, Jordan, actually me, um, Chris, yes, that is exactly the kind of link. That's why I mentioned the Linux Foundation training. So is the link you just dropped in text. So I agree. Um, the, yeah, so I'm not, given the priority grouping thing is that, the idea is that um, it's the thing you start on is, mm -hmm to have folks starting on training, like as a thing that happens over time, because you're right, it does take time. And it's not like a discrete one time event, unless you just take the CBT and say, ding, I'm done. But like you may be underestimating the neuroatypicalness of many open source maintainers and how when faced with an overwhelming seeming task, they will shut down and bail and do something entirely unrelated. So if you, give someone a training class, they're not going to read the rest of the list. They're just going to fuck off. So like you need to give them very small tasks, I think to, so that they can achieve things and feel completed, feel completion quickly uh, in order to get people engaged. I'm open to that. I'm I, to that I, yeah. I, I agree with Jordan. Um, and this has been a, something I've, you know, re repeated uh, throughout this process with, with this list, which is you want the stuff at the beginning to be, what can I, if I'm going through this list as a maintainer, I want to see, I want to see points on the board. I want to be able to go, yep, 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 yep. And not put the hard thing first. Um, and, and 
and the and the training is also sort of a meta issue, right? Um, yes, training is not actually like itself something. Um, you know, you can say this project, you know, it's not like, oh, enable MFA at GitHub. Oh, make sure there are no secrets, uh, you know, committed into source control. Um, uh, use SSH keys. These are like more concrete things. I mean, I, I guess the training is something concrete, but um, it is uh, in it's it's sort of in a different category. And I but at the same time, I do understand the um, the motivation for like, putting it in front of them right away and say, this is something that you should be doing. Um, I, I think it's, that that is important. Uh, the question for me is, can we balance that somehow? Can we, can we bring that front and center without making it look like right now where it looks like an obstacle, um, which is Jordan's mm. concern. Um, Cause I agree. Right. Uh, so I, so I, 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 yeah. I agree with both of you. I'm just trying to see like what can we do to sort of um you know to reconcile that right yeah i it seems to me because i agree with you jordan i i also so actually i'm i'm i think we're all in alignment i'm i'm unsure around solutioning the other um idea i had when i was trying to figure out where to put this was to put it as like a priority group like a recommendation group zero but the re recommendations aren't required, but maybe that like resolves the checkboxy nature of the training. And instead there's um, another conversation about it. Or there's instead uh, we put in recommendations so that kind of changes the nature of it, or we take it out entirely for the moment while we noodle on it a little bit more and make it its own thing, like make training its own discrete, like, Here's the checklist of things you should do from like a policy and process perspective and configuration management perspective. Uh, and then also there is a separate thing around things you should do to train. And um, it's just simply not in the priority group or checklist at all. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what that would look like, but just as a concept, what do you all think about just taking training out entirely and making its own thing? Um, I yeah, I think I, 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 my initial reaction is I think that's a good idea. My, uh, you know, the risk there that I would want to avoid is I don't, don't want to like bury it somewhere that nobody ever mm -hmm. sees it, right? That's going to be the challenge. Um, I could also see it being something specifically mentioned in like the whatever the, the parent page is for this that takes you here yeah. and say this is yeah. the thing. Or even possibly, I was still, you know, runs the risk of being at the beginning, but like you could have like a note. And so it doesn't appear here in like the list of things we're checking off, but um, there could be like, a, you know, uh, a sentence or something at the top of this. Or like I said, in the sort of the parent page document um, that talks about it. And I don't think it's unreasonable to say that it's expected uh, for project maintainers. Um, mm -hmm. I've taken the the that LFD one twenty one. It's not it's not a you know a big ask. I don't think. Um, but yeah, oh, those are my thoughts. I guess. So what I'll do next steps here is I will take it out of the priority groups right now, and um, yeah, what you just said, Chris, about putting it in like the higher level like readme document. Um, was kind of like, I think where I was going with, um, meaning like putting it someplace else. I also, maybe with this approach, it feels like there's an opportunity to be a little bit more expansive on training opportunities and talk about it more than just these two items itself. Uh, I'm not saying like go crazy with it, but to be a little bit more, um, you know, provide a little bit more uh, guidance and help than just, you know, take this, take this CB, take this like CBT and take this CBT and you're good to go. Ben? So hmm. I'm looking at the list of party groups and I'm looking at this recommendation groups as well. Is there a way to remove one of these? So like, what I'm getting at is, is we're presenting like two lists 
mm. folks. I'm just thinking like, why can't we just say this is the most important stuff for you to do? And this is the second most important stuff for you to do. I'm a little confused at why we've got two two groupings here. The reason what for the two groups is that, um, and I could this is maybe just a, a nomenclature thing. So there was the initial priority groups, and then we wound up having a bunch of items that were recommended. And um, because they're recommended, that means that doesn't more effectively mean saying like you don't have to do this, and thus like it didn't get put into the priority groups of things that were expected. But they should still so, be interspersed with the required things because that's where people are going to run into them. Like, like I, in other words, mm -hmm. when I'm like, like, like priority group one is all about MFA. If there happened to be a recommendation about MFA, all the MFA things should be at one place. So it says you have to do this stuff. You should do this. And then I can make that decision. And then I never have oh, to I think see. about MFA ever again. And I move to the okay. next thing. Yeah. Right. Like almost mm -hmm. like each of these groups should have a title as well. Like priority group one is called MFA or whatever. Like, well, you have to they're, put not, a title, they're not just as like, grouped together. They're not as grouped together as that, right? That's the thing. Okay. It's like some of the priority groups have a mix match of things as well. Sure, that, that's fine. Yeah. It's not necessary that they have a title or anything. I just meant that, like, yeah. like in general, like I, I think that, I, for my brain, I would want to think about a region, including expected and re recommendeds, and then never think about that region again and move on to the next one. Okay. Yeah, I can go fix that. That's no problem with me. Um, it, yeah, that's um, nice. And it, it does simplify because like I am thinking about this as like, you know, a maintainer is going to come in. They want a list of things to do, right? Mm -hmm. One list. Yeah. Oh, Chris. Yeah. No, I agree. I I'd mentioned this previously as well, where like if I'm going through this list, I would be really annoyed if <laughs> if I'm doing these things. I'm going through the motions. I'm in this interface. Okay, let me make this change. Maybe make this configuration. Now I now I'm going to the next things, and I'm in some com completely different area. And now I come to an item that brings me back to the thing I was at 15 minutes mm. ago. That's annoying. Um, so uh, the 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 challenge there is, of course, um, we're sort of like want our cake and eat it too, um, because we're saying like surface up the easy stuff and then the harder stuff later. But if some of the harder stuff is interspersed you're kind of like backtracking on that a little bit. So that's right. I don't know. It, 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 it's going to be maybe a little bit tricky to find the balance. Um, I, I have another question though. Was Ben referring to this in the document? I, I, because at first it sounded like you were asking about the fact that there's a category list document and then there's a separate priority. Um, so if um, this might be easier to see if you close the preview, and you can get the, I think I'm in the same document. So like on, in the version that I'm looking at that I'm not editing. So Rudd, can you close the edit window? Oh, sure. Um... Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, okay. So the, I was looking at this just in a different way, but like I was looking al along the left, I'm like, okay, there's all these party groups and there's recommended groups. Basically, my comment was, can we just have a single list of like, here's the most important things, here's the second most important things, rather than having okay. a list of 14 priority groups and then eight recommended groups, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, the, yeah, there's there's two issues there, right? One is like, does it make sense to have uh, priority groups and recommendation groups? And then like a broader question of like, well, what's the purpose of the groups anyway? And uh, what I'm missing here is like, do the groups have any sort of semantic meaning? Like, why is group seven, these seven or six items, group eight only has one item, and then group nine has five items? Like, what are the The, the rationale the is, um, just a, a friendly reminder, this has been in the document, the spreadsheet for quite a while. Yeah. Um, the, so I think the, the feedback was at the time was that this is a really big group list of items. We need to break it up into manageable chunks so that uh, people can attack these things a little bit like, you know, kind of bite off like little chunks at a time to say, hey, we have accomplished this much. And so rather than trying to provide like a sequential list throughout 
it was the idea that we're of grouping um, either similar activities or like um, things that should probably be done first, like as an activity together um, so that teams can go, okay, we're working on group six right now. We're not, we're, you know, we're not looking at 72 items. We're looking at like the five things in group six. Um, I'm not opposed to creating like a different kind of organization around this. I'm just, um, to be uh, clear also, most of the OpenJS projects don't have much of a team. They have like a person or yeah. two. Yep. But, mm -hmm. So the, that was the, that was the idea behind it. I'm totally fine with changing it. I okay. just think that it's a, um, my first stab at this was to try to create a sequential list. And I found that to be very challenging because it depends on the project itself and where they're at. Um, the categories themselves turned out to not be very good at saying you should attack this category first and this category second and this one third, because the challenge with the categories was is the categories themselves are effectively what you all are asking for by mixing in the recommendations and expected items together. And um, the challenge with that is that some of these recommended items are quite aspirational compared to uh, and quite challenging compared to the expected items. And so mixing them together and just saying you should focus on this category first and this category second didn't seem to land well when you all saw the list kind of before and based on the feedback on the recommended recommended items. So that would be my my kind of concern about going back to the idea of mixing recommendations and uh, expected items together is that um, that is to a large extent what the category list actually is. And um, the challenge is the category list itself is, um, it's, I, I think it's challenging. I, I'm, I'm open-minded, but I think it's challenging to say you should attack this category first and this category second and this one third. Yeah. Uh, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, it was just a content thing. Um, I don't recall the discussion around SSH keys and pass phrases. I don't recall the, the conclusion of it, rather. Um, did we, was it everyone else's rec recollection that we did, in fact, stick with that it should be expected that you use a passphrase? Yeah, you you reluctantly... Uh... <laughs> You were really yeah, I don't remember. conceded to that passphrase is a good idea. And, you know, because I think I think the thing that might have convinced you again reluctantly was the fact that SSH keys do get shared. Um, the files do get passed around in some cases. Um, and uh and and people and you know they get copied to different machines. Um and by not protecting with a passphrase, you're just in, in, introducing additional risk. Oh, right. It sh should use a passphrase if it's on a shared machine. But if it's not on a but shared machine, a there's no point, right? But any pa any passphrase can become, or sorry, any SSH key can, that you when you created it, didn't intend for it to be doing this thing, but could become the thing that's doing that. So at time of creation, you don't necessarily know what it's going to be I used see. for. So the passphrase is, is okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Okay, ultimately, yeah, we don't have to rehash the argument. I just yeah. was looking for the yeah, recollection. Sure. Ultimately, if somebody doesn't want to use a passphrase, uh, you know, there's nothing you're going to yeah, do yeah. about it, and they're still <laughs> going to check this item off and say, yep, we're good to go. Um, and, right. you know, it's it's on our system, right? So if, if you really hate them, uh, no, you know, we can't, we can't. Yeah, no, I got that. You. Um, we, won't, we, 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 won't die, so, we won't, like, call the police on you. Don't worry. Yeah. I, I did have my, <laughs> lowered my hand, I think, as I was talking, but um, I was going to say, um, we have to be, let's just get comfortable with the fact that whatever we do here in terms of the organization, um, there's going to be good things about it. And there's going to be things that we're sacrificing about it. Um, it's not going, there's no perfect answer. Um, and I, I'm, my, what I don't want to do is keep like deliberating on it, like ad nauseum and we never, you know, it, it's just slowing us down. So I think we, I think what you have there in terms of the priority groups is what we want. Um, the exact shape of it and grouping the similar things together, obviously clashes a little bit with the, um, the, the priorities, uh, but um, let's strike, you know, a decent balance 
um, and then and then move on. Um, that being said, uh, whether this should be just one giant list or groups, I think groups is fine. Uh, my only, but but the way that it is right now is that the groups are kind of. I, I know they're in they're in order of priority, right? One is presumably better to tackle first than mm -hmm. to do two or to do more appropriately like don't do 14 first when you should do one two and three first um and yep. that's fine but let's make the but even though there's like one then two maybe we just collapse the groups i think there are too many groups i think it makes zero sense to have a group with one item in it um so maybe group them in bunches of five or ten or thereabouts or something uh and 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 call it a day and we can iterate on it yeah i think in practice I, I will i'll take a i will take another stab at this i this the priority groups took a long time to put together to try to find something that was defensible um the ones that where there is only one or two items the reason for that is um one is theming in terms of like the activity itself and the second one is that some of these things are quite like quite a bit to do and there are whole projects okay. to themselves so like starting right regression tests for bugs and security bones like that's um i was like okay like i've seen teams start trying to do that and that's like a not just a technical journey but an emotional one um and not just like check boxes and things like that there are some things that are thematically grouped together that like more practice you'd wind up like in practice, you'd wind up doing similar things, these similar things at the same time. Um, and it was also a recognition, the, the smaller groups was a recognition that in the categories themselves, there are some things that you really should do now versus there are things that are like really like they're good to have, but they're not like the most important things. And the fact that some of the categories have quite a few recommendations that we weren't really enforcing at all. Um, so it's kind of like so like the cat the recommendations themselves um i'm fine with changing the name of it like maybe we make you know maybe we just change it so that we continuing continue the numbering scheme instead of we rather than having them be a separate group so that was just kind of like a thing i did um but some of the some of the recommendations are much more intense than the expect expected items and so grouping them together in priority groups I don't know if that really makes sense. Um, I don't have like a great example off the top of my head just to kind of think about right now. Um, but a lot, but there was, um, oh yeah, so like vulnerability management is a great example. We have these pretty standard SLAs, but then there's recommendations for much more intense SLAs. And that is, I think, an example of where you start someplace and then once you're good at it you evolve to another place but we never but because of what, how intense the slas were we never wanted to make them expected so um yeah that's just kind of the, i'm not i i i would love to hear uh frankly i would love to for you guys to like kind of go back and look at it and think about it for a little bit maybe come back with some like more specific ideas because um this is this was it was challenging to think of like a way to like give some sense of like sequencing um given the nature of the content itself chris you have your hand up still i'm not sure if that was from before or not sorry yeah um just yeah further uh reiterating kind of what i said before which is like okay i would rather see us um, if the only outstanding thing is the, for lack of a better word, humming and hawing over the, the ordering and the grouping, if that's the only thing, I do not want to block on that. I would rather just get this sort of out where it's going to live in GitHub or whatever, um, and then we can we can create PRs to shift the priority groups and stuff like that. You know, because I could, if you go back to the priority group list, like, for example, the thing on the 50% code coverage, like I uh it's further up, but um like I think that's actually like I think that's great, but I would rather see that further below things like branch protection in priority group nine. But 
I don't think that that means, okay, let's stop and let's fix this before we can move forward. Um, like I would, again, I would just rather see it like if it's in the shape that we like, or at least we like enough, again, accepting that we're never going to get to the perfect thing. Um, and, you know, everything is correct. Like I would say like ship it and oh. let's iterate and, you know, the thing with the training, like all of this, like let's, we can, we can do that. Uh, after sort of the initial delivery, shall we say. So, um, you know, if if that makes sense to folks, like really focus on like, what do we see is like the blockers for MVP um, and let's get rid of those blockers if there, if any remain. And if there are none that remain, let's move forward um, and, and, and otherwise remove those, whatever the remaining blockers are. Um, well, I think, I think, I appreciate that, Chris. I think the next step maybe would be for you all to check out the spreadsheet again where this is all at and uh take a look at the priority group call and if you have some feelings on it put the comments in there because i think that'll be a faster initial iteration because um just to kind of um because i can go through that really quickly and make adjustments but if you see anything that's really like silly or egregious or you don't think makes sense um definitely call that out and I can fix that pretty quickly. Uh, real quickly, uh, I completely agree with everything Chris said about like mm -hmm. yeah, pushing this out. And again, like we could talk about, you know, and we will talk about formatting and grouping stuff um, a lot more when this gets released. Um, something I just noticed is column B says incubating. Yes. See at the top of the header there. And I noticed that also in the... Um, uh, in your priority list, there's like an IN. When, mm -hmm. I, when I originally looked at this, I was like, is that a typo? Because so I was like, should that be impact? And I was like, shouldn't that read IM? And so I was a little confused. Yeah, this is for projects that are graduating from incubating to being something else. Yeah. Yeah. So impact was the at large and impact Got were it. one group together. That's called active in the spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay, got it. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the spreadsheet was originally was originally incubating, active, and retiring. In the grouping here, it became incubating, at large, and impact, and archived. Got it. I think the idea was that at the time to kind of like get this out the door, there was a discussion like. I guess this kind of like structuring didn't get um, as much discussion as it needed. And I think the takeaway was that in a perfect world, there would be a separate column for at large and impact and we would have different expectations, but you... that is a larger, that like, that we didn't kind of deal with that before. Um, Can you hover over my comment? I'm just curious what I wrote there. Am I like, this is, oh, this is awesome. Never mind. <laughs> I thought maybe I was asking the question that I just asked. It's been a long time. Um, right, never mind. So, you don't have to go to the history. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there is an action item to say to go through this again and the expectations again and break out at large and impact projects to see if there's a difference. I think what will wind up happening is we'll wind up finding out the places where the expectation is too high for at-large projects, and that is how we'll wind up breaking that out. So I expect, I my sense is today, the current at-large and impact pro, uh, column is effectively the impact column. And we're just, and I think when we start like testing this against projects, we'll find those examples where we should say this is deferred or recommended for a, um, uh, an at-large project, and that's how we create that column. Cool. Um, let's see what else is there. We've got ten minutes left. So next, let steps. me just ask: like, is there okay. like at this stage, are folks okay with this going into GitHub? Like, is there anything that we think is blocking this at this point? I think there's absolutely no reason it can't go into GitHub right now. Yeah. Um, there's the, there's the next step, which is like, is it ready to be socialized and, you know, how do we yeah. know about that? Um, and I think it can go in the GitHub still, long and, before and, that though. By the way, yes. 
Um, and by the way, we did not, um, partially because we had a lot of other things, we didn't get to it, but partially also because I forgot, um, but we did not bring this up at the CPC last week um, where we, we had wanted to get some projects to volunteer um, to like at least say what they've done so far and uh, and and great if they can go one better and, and start implementing this stuff and so we could get some information. Um, I thought we were going to do that this week because I wanted to finish the actual docs themselves and get all. Well, that there is no meeting. Sure. There's there's no the CPCs every two weeks, so it'd be next week. Okay. Um, a number of them have already checked off a lot of these boxes just yeah. from the OpenSSF best practices badge, and there's so a whole the, spreadsheet that shows their percentages yeah. if you're interested. Yep. Um, and so, okay, so we still have a thing at the CBC we need to bring, um, which we will do. Uh, I will make every effort to remember to do that next time. Um, the other thing is, uh, oh, where does this live in GitHub? Uh, do we want this to live in a different repo than the uh, than the security repo? Um, this could be on its own. Uh, it could also be something that lives in the CPC repo with other project guides it should uh, not be in a cpc repo it'll be too busy okay. like there's going to be a lot of iteration on this content and so i feel like it should go maybe in the security repo or its own repo but nowhere else okay um i'm fine with that uh i don't have strong feelings there are definitely benefits to having it in its own repo um downside is you have to manage in another repo but you also can sort of focus stuff there um in the open ssf we we do both uh, you know i i don't know that we have we don't <laughs> i don't recall that there's any rubric for how we decide when we do it in its own repo or not um there's not necessarily a wrong answer but uh obviously we we need to determine i i guess we could put it in the security repo to start because it already exists mm -hmm. and we can always move it to its own repo if it felt like um that you know we felt like it was needed or wanted. Yeah, my my initial take and check out the um, kind of run book. I have like the proposed um, URLs for some stuff here. So I was figuring we would just put it into the cloud space repo. Um, we can definitely talk about like the naming of a folder. I was just going to say the security compliance guidelines as a folder. Uh, within that and uh, maintain things there. I can see the argument for putting it in its own putting it in its own repo, but maybe once it is um, more stable over the long term and seeing how things go, we can kind of see that. But I think for right now, like my sense is keeping it in the collab space um, made the most sense to me, especially since. You know, naming of the cloud space aside, thinking of it more as like a working group in the, in the spirit of open SSF, like uh, it made sense to me to put it within the purview of the working group slash collab space. Um, let's, let's see, cool. So um, action items are one, I will, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to assign you guys a handful of these priority group pages to work on. So the thing, the, the work that's left to do is to create the individual pages for each priority group that have the detailed information. So I've made the first, uh, looks like I made the first eight of them already. I did not want to create more of them until uh, we had this conversation and also so I could delegate a little bit because I want you all to make a handful of them just to see if you have any feelings on maintainability and structure and markdown itself. Um, so it's not just kind of me like in the weeds and because uh, I would appreciate if you all see something that makes uh, a lot of sense um, to, you know, have hands on and have that experience to be able to provide an informed opinion. So I'll do that. Um, we're going to get it on the CPC for next week. And um, I guess the I guess that is the big one for right now. We didn't get to talk about the CV, the coordinated vulnerability disclosure run book at all, but I guess we'll punt that one to next week, and we can focus time on make sure we actually dedicate some time to that. Um, let's see what else do I have for you all. I think that's about it for my takeaways on this. It, while you are, I would ask also as an action item 
please definitely go through the spreadsheet again and I'll, I'll specifically pin you guys to like remind you to take a look at the priority groups. Uh, we didn't really resolve the question of recommendation groups versus the, versus the priority groups themselves. Um, so I think, the, I think the action item for you all is to take a look at the groups as they are and um, see if you find inspiration and some, have some like can form some de detailed thoughts uh, based upon what's there right now to see if there's uh, a better way. I agree it is, um, it is a challenging problem to solve for sure. And it is not hard for us to, for me to go through and move things around and all that once all of the markdown is actually done. It's actually not that big of a deal. Um, I'm very receptive to the idea of creating, of having fewer priority groups. That makes sense in my mind. Um, I'm receptive to the idea of putting some of the recommended, uh, changing these to be sequential, uh, continue the sequence of numbers rather than being their own separate recommendation groups. I think the, um, the thing to think about when you go through and look at these things is that some of the recommendations are, um, are things that you could reasonably do at the same time as the expected item. And I think a great example of that is like the hardware keys for um, multi-factor access. That's, that's, that's something where it's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, you know what? We're just gonna go do that now, fine. Um, whereas some of these other items are bigger lifts and some of them are things that are highly, the, the thing is a lot of the recommend, recommended items were not things that we felt comfortable really ever expecting from people and were instead were highly opinionated things that, um, Frankly, the recommended the group of recommended items were things that like I pushed back on removing entirely, but we couldn't, but we where we could not find a consensus to agree that it should be expected. But because of what it was, because of what the item is, and like generally good recommended security practices, it didn't feel like it made a lot of sense to remove them entirely. So um, that's why they got pushed to the bottom in the end, is that they're the more opinionated controversial items. So um, I would just think about when you're looking at the lists, whether and look at, and I would take a look at the category list here to kind of get a sense of what they would look like if we started mixing them together um, and see how you feel about it then. Because I do remember the controversy, controversy around a lot of these items. And so um, I just would keep that in mind when we think about it, that's all. So I will ping you all on Slack to uh, follow up with those action items. And uh, I really do appreciate your all's inputs on this. Um, I'm gonna keep proceeding as if like we're good to go and that there's work to do. But um, along the way this week, if you have like a revelation or inspiration around um, how to organize priority groups and recommend it, recommend stuff at all, please let me know because it's, again, it's not that big of a deal to adjust. Um, and I want this to be in a place, what putting in GitHub in my mind also means that we're ready to socialize it, hopefully, to some extent. And if there's something that is holding it back from socializing, we should deal with those things immediately. Ben? Yeah, just, just real quick. Um, if we want to uh, discuss this in the CPC call on Tuesday next week, we should probably aim to have this merged in GitHub by the end of the week. Right. Yes, that's um, yes, actually, I was hoping to basically get that done. Like if folks, I'm not sure what people's timelines are like, I'm going to go start pushing everything into it tonight because I was thinking we could get it in the meeting tomorrow. So yeah, I was expecting to merge stuff tonight because we don't want folks making updates to the hack MD once you've put it in the GitHub, yep. right? Because we'll lose that yep. stuff. So yep. we just need to communicate about that in the maybe in the <laughs> thank you, Chris, in the yep. security <laughs> slack so that folks are know where to edit and when yeah yeah so you should start expecting me now that i know that the cpc we're doing cpc tomorrow then um uh, i won't rush to do it like tonight but um yeah like thing the things that are pretty much good to go i'm expecting to put in there like within the next day or two really i gotta um, drop for another meeting yep so, peace thanks, out folks everybody. thanks so much Everything sounds, all the plan sounds good to me thank you right. heat pumps cool. heat, heat pumps, pumps. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Yeah, later.